Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, listeners. Welcome to Business Innovators Radio. This is your host, Constant Taylor. Today, we have a very special guest on the show, and they're going to show, share some very exciting information with us. So, if you're looking to increase your personal and professional effectiveness, then you've come to the right place. Our special guest today is Pat Williams. Pat has been speaking professionally for almost 30 years, and the primary content that he speaks on is leadership, teamwork, and extreme winning. He's based out of Orlando, Florida, and he's spoken both nationally and internationally. He recently released his 100th book called Extreme Winning, The 12 Qualities That Extreme Winners Possess. Pat, welcome to the show. Listen, thanks so much for inviting me. I'm glad to uh, hook up with you here. And we're glad to have you. I know you're busy man, so I'll just jump right into the program by asking you if you could tell the listeners a little bit about your speaking business and how you help your clients become more effective. Well, I have found in the corporate world uh, that there's a great fascination, first of all, with leadership. Uh, Everything rises and falls on leadership. And I've learned that uh, from my leadership experience and all the studying I've done of great leaders, uh, that there's seven qualities uh, that the great leaders possess. And perhaps I could summarize it in this little verse that my friend Swen Nader put together for me. Seven things one must do to be a leader right and true. Have vision that is strong and clear. Communicate so they can hear. Have people skills based in love and character that's far above. The competence to solve and teach and boldness that has fearless reach, a serving heart that stands close by to help, assist, and edify. The second area that I have found corporate America is fascinated with is teamwork. And I've learned that the corporate world is very intrigued with what the great sports team builders have done to put their teams together. And and the real question is, is that transferable over to my Fortune 500 company, or uh, to my mom and pop widget factory, and I'm convinced that it is. And so, in that presentation, I talk about the eight keys uh, to putting a great team together. First of all, you've got to have outstanding talent. Secondly, there's never been a great team that didn't have great leadership. The third area is commitment. Great teams are committed to each other. They're committed to excellence. They're committed to competing. They're committed to winning. The fourth thing I can tell you about great teams is they're passionate about what they're doing. They're excited. They're enthusiastic. They've got great energy. Uh, the, uh, uh, the fifth thing that we've learned about great teams is that it's always about the team, not me. More, more we and less me. Uh, the the uh, next queer area I can tell you about with great teams is that they empower each other. They they know how to uplift each other and encourage and uh, build each other up. And then on great teams, there's respect, which leads to trust, which leads to loyalty, which leads to love, uh, which leads to friendship. And the final thing I've learned and talk about with great teams is they're made up of men and women of character. Uh, character counts in every area of life. and uh, I conclude my talk uh, with that discussion about character. And then the third area that I love to talk to corporate America about is this whole area of winning. At the end of the day, we're all judged on W's, victories. It's certainly the case in my world of sports, and uh, that's true in any field. We're all measured by winning. And uh, from my, gosh, 57 years in college and pro sports, I've learned about uh, the qualities of these winners in, that I've observed, that I've been around. They're extremists, and I love to talk about the 12 extreme qualities uh, that the extreme winners have. So that's a, a, a short summary of what I love to talk about You know, when I'm out on the, the corporate trail. Now, do you, it, it, does your business consist of, of, obviously, books, but then there's speaking engagements. Do you do any consulting projects where you get in and you kind of analyze 
their issues and problems and suggest solutions? Well, before I speak anywhere, I insist on a conference call uh, with the uh, the people heading up that organization. Uh, I want to learn everything I can about uh, this group that I'm going to speak to. I want to know who's going to be there. Uh, I want to know the male-female ratio. I want to know how everybody's going to be dressed. Uh, I want to know um, uh, what people are, are struggling with. Uh, I want to know what's going very well for them. I want to know everything I can uh, before I stand up and speak to them. Uh, I think that's vital uh, mm -hmm. for any speaker to, to really be sharp and knowledgeable about every facet that you can learn about with, with any organization you're going to speak to. And what are the most common problems that you find when you're going in there, when you start digging underneath the surface of the uh, corporations that you work with? Well, that's a very good question. A lot of it may be just getting along with each other or, or rivalries, you know, within different departments of an organization, you know, that, that can become uh, very serious matters. Uh, the lack of teamwork. Uh, I think the other thing is uh, leadership. Uh, you, you know, leadership is not just the CEO. It goes all the way down through the ranks. And I think many people come in an organization and say, well, I'm just not a leader. And I would say, yes, you are. Uh, you know, you, you can lead no matter where you are, and you don't need a title. Uh, you don't need a title to be a leader. And, and so step up when opportunities present themselves or needs present themselves. Step up and take leadership positions uh, because it, it means so much for any organization. Those are just a few of the things that I'm learning about as I, I, I dig in and really learn about organizations that I'm going to speak to. Thank you very much for sharing that. So my next question is, what are some of the popular misconceptions about what you bring to the table with, your, with organizations, and how do you dispel those? I think the, uh, the answer, what I really want to talk about here uh, is this. Uh, I have learned that organizations want practical material. They want uh, dirt under the fingernail stuff. In other words, when I'm finished speaking, what can the people in the audience take uh, right away and put into practice immediately? Something that I've shared, either about leadership or teamwork or, or a personal challenge, uh, even if it's just one item uh, that people can grab and take and run with, uh, that's really what organizations want. Uh, I get uh, kind of frustrated in my own way because I watch video a lot of speakers and uh, I study them very closely and with, a, and with a critical eye. And they may go for an hour. And, uh, and at the end of the hour, uh, my thought is, uh, what, what have they done here? What have they shared? Is there any material here that people can run with? Anything you can take notes on? Uh, by the way, that's another big issue to me, uh, the ability or the desire for people in the audience to take notes uh, and, and really write down what I'm sharing. Uh, that's a big one to me, so that they can take the material uh, that I've spent years developing, uh, decades developing, and and then they can take it and uh, and write it down. I think that's important. Okay, excellent. So, when can you give me a case study of a business that was having issues and challenges, and how you were able to go in, diagnose the issue, and help them solve their problems? Well, I, uh, without without specifically naming an organization, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I, I do want to share with you is uh, whenever you're speaking to a group uh, that would be sales oriented, uh, I always talk about winning. Uh, I want to stress to the to this group uh, that they are being judged on on victories in sales, just like coaches are in sports. And, uh, and I talked to them then about what it takes to be a winner. Uh, and it starts, first of all, uh, in this book I've written and in my speaking, uh, every winner I've ever been around, it, it starts with an extreme dream somewhere in their life, either as a, as a youngster or somewhere along the line, a dream really came alive in their life. Uh, they had this dream and they wanted to see it come to fulfillment. Uh, I don't think anybody who's been successful 
uh, um, it wasn't dream oriented. I know that's the case in my life. As a, as a seven-year-old boy, I saw my first Major League Baseball game in Philadelphia, and I knew immediately what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to be a ball player. Uh, gosh, that was uh, 68 years ago, and I'm still pursuing that dream. My, my playing days are over, but uh, my dream in sports continues, and it all started as a seven-year-old. Uh, watching my first Major League Baseball game in 1947. So I encourage people to dream big, dream often, dream in depth, dream in technicolor. Uh, dreams are important. So when when helping sales teams and sales teams that are, let's say, ineffective, what are some of the things that you look for first as possible potential deficiencies? Well, I, I would say, first of all, preparation. Mm. Uh, you know, before you make any sales call, uh, preparation is the key. Uh, that would be true of coaching. You know, coaches uh, have got to be prepared every day in practice. So extreme preparation is a huge earmark of anybody in sales. Uh, the second, the, the next thing I can tell you is the importance of extreme focus. Uh, I think people get in trouble when they start drifting, wandering. Uh, getting off on the side roads, the rabbit trails, and, and, and losing their focus. Every successful person I've ever seen uh, is, is very, very focused on what they're doing. They don't get distracted. And then uh, the third thing uh, that I would share is uh, extreme passion. Uh, it's tough to sell anything if you're not excited, if you're not enthusiastic, if you're not energetic about what you're doing. Uh, those qualities radiate through other people, through an organization. So let's, let's just say extreme preparation, extreme focus, extreme passion. Mm. Those three qualities will get any salesperson going. Okay. And then what do you think about practice in there, right? You know, actually getting out there and as in coaching and in sports, actually practicing their craft. Well, I think I think what uh, I've learned about great salespeople or about about great anybody is that they're lifelong learners, mm. and, and they're constantly uh, surrounding themselves with uh, with mentors, life coaches. Uh, they want to learn, they want to study other people, and they pull from them and take from them. Uh, they're voracious readers. Uh, they are constantly working on learning, and uh, and when you stop learning, really, you begin the dying process. Frankly. So to be a great salesperson, to be a great anything, uh, the challenge of lifelong learning uh, is indispensable. You just can't really function well without it. How about the individual who has had setback after setback or failure after failure? Their confidence level is at a two on a scale of one to ten, and it's just you know really – based on life circumstances as they perceive it, it's hard to get charged up and move forward because they've had so many setbacks. I think at that point, all you need is one comeback, one sale, one item to get you going again. Quick story. It's 1964. I'm 23 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, I've just taken a job as the assistant general manager, the business manager of the Miami Marlins, mm, wow. minor league, minor, minor league ball club in the Florida state league. I'm starting my career in the front office and, and Bill Dunney, the general manager of the club sent me out to sell program ads, you know, for the coming season. And out I went and failed. Oh, did I fail? I, I mean, I could not sell anything. Mm. And I came back, uh, thinking my, you know, my career is over. I'm not going to make it. I was in tears. And, and, and I told Mr. Durning, I said, I just can't do this. And he said, well, let, here's what I want you to do. He said, uh, there's a restaurant up here, Muggy's Restaurant. Never will forget it. He said, go in and see Mr. Muggy and see if you can't sell him a $25 ad. So off I went uh, timidly and went and presented it to Mr. Muggy. And guess what happened? What happened? He yeah. bought the ad. <laughs> he bought the ad. I celebrated with a piece of key lime pie at his restaurant, best I've ever eaten, mm. and we had, I had my first ad sold. And from there, I was able to go sell the whole program. Mm. Uh, that one sale, uh, you know, after so many failures, that one sale 
uh, absolutely did it for me. I was a ball of fire and my confidence soared. Mm. Now, I never did ask, by the way, uh, did, did Bill Durney call Mr. Muggy in advance <laughs> and, and, and tell him, you know, what was going on? I have no idea. Right. Never did, never did check that out. All I know is that I finally got a sale and my confidence was sky high and I was able to go sell out the rest of the program. Man, what a great, what a great story. Now, I would like for you to, if you could, uh, convey one central message or theme to the listeners so that if they don't get anything else out of our discussion, this is what I want to leave the listeners with. Could you do that? I'm often asked about, uh, and I ask other people, uh, what is your greatest life secret? Or what is your greatest secret of success? It's a good question. And uh, some year, sometime back, somebody asked me that question. Uh, what, is, what is your secret of success? So here it is. And here's my counsel to people. When your greatest talent intersects with your greatest passion, you have found your sweet spot in life. Hmm. And that is where you want to hang for all of your days. When your greatest talent intersects, crosses paths with your greatest passion, you have found your sweet spot. And that's where you want to get your education, uh, get your opportunities. Uh, that's where you want to really spend your time, your rest of your life. I have, I so have. that's and and I and I share that with young people particularly, you know, as they're starting out in life. Talent intersecting with passion, uh, you're on your way. Mm. And a lot of times when we struggle and find things are not going well, if we analyze it, we'll probably see that those two don't intersect. That's a very good point. Mm. So uh, it's a it's a good study, and particularly with young people, you know, I share that with. Young people in school or high school, college, you know, that this is how you want to be really examining yourself and uh, getting ready for your career. Uh, that little simple message. In fact, I've got a contract to write a book on that topic. Uh, it'll be out in a year or so. Okay. And uh, that's one of my next writing projects. Okay, excellent. Now, if the listeners would like to get in contact with your organization, learn more about the services that you provide and possibly engage with your company, how can they do that? Well, probably the best thing to do is just hit, uh, send me an email, uh, P. Williams at OrlandoMagic.com, P. Williams at OrlandoMagic.com. Uh, my uh, website is uh, PatWilliams.com, and the Twitter page, Orlando Magic Pat. and uh, always happy to hear from, from people. Love, love to hear from them. Well, Pat, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was very enlightening and inspirational information that you shared with our listeners, and we really appreciate it. Chat with you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.